Hey, what's up? This is Liam from Cancer Bats, and you're watching a music blog, yeah? On the internet. A music blog, yeah? yeah? Who else does it in a British accent? A lot of bands. Who's your favorite band that's done it so far? That's done the music blog, yeah? Yeah. At the end of it. Um, let's think. Well, I have to try to, like, <clears throat> excuse me, cancel the actual British bands who have done it. Oh. So, and they're like, oh, music blog, yeah? <laughs> they even put more of a British emphasis on it. On the yeah. On the it's yeah. It's like when you ask, like, a Canadian about something very Canadian. Hey. Like, when Americans are like, oh, you guys like Tim Hortons? And we're like, oh, fucking Hortons, man! <laughs> like, you get way more Canadian, right? So I'm sure you having a very British-sounding blog. Yeah. You just, your blog is super British. Do you find, as Canadians, like, do you hear the aboot ever? Is that something that you actually hear? No, but I do. I don't either. I do notice that ours tapers off, I think, a lot more when we're abroad. Okay. Like, I think we noticeably speak more Canadian when we're on tour in Canada. Really? Yeah, and bands we're on tour with will notice it way more, too. I think also the big part is, like, Mike, our drummer, is from Winnipeg. And there's, like, a very thick Winnipeg accent that kind of creeps out as you start, like, entering the prairies. Okay. Or when we're around other Winnipeg bands. Like, if we're on a tour with Comeback Kid, like, everyone just speaks Winnipeg to each other. <laughs> speaks Winnipeg. Right? So <laughs> you have this, like, thicker Canadian accent that's just kind of present. Yeah. But if we're in Europe for, like, three months, I feel like our accents kind of, like, will change. And, that's like, really funny. Be a little, little less Canadian. When we were on tour with Guar and we, like, got into Canada, we are like, oh! Canada, eh? Oh, so stoked to be here. And they were just like, your guys' accents went through the roof. Like, you're so excited. I can totally to be see here. them having an influence on you, though. Yeah. Like, as far as. The yeah, they're larger than life characters. So when we're in Canada and the shows are really good, it's like, well, we'll become these larger than life Canadian characters as well. Right? <laughs> yes. I love that little intro towards things. I think we can. There you go. Yeah, I think we can start, we start our intro, guys. A music blog, yeah. A music blog, yeah. <laughs> You ready to roll? I am. Okay. We're already rolling. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. This is Alicia from A Music Blog. Yeah. 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 And I'd like to good. welcome you. Thank you. To our interview with Cancer Bats. How are you? I'm really good. Yeah, I'm stoked. Yeah, me too. Thank you for taking the time to have a chat. No worries. This is nice and easy. We finished sound check um, and just been hanging out all day. We had to load in so early. What time? Uh, we had to be here at 1 o'clock. But we yeah. we just finished playing at Hard Luck last night, and everyone was out until, you know, like, 4 and 5 in the morning. So we went back to Hard Luck, loaded out all of our gear, and then loaded here for one. So everyone's feeling a little... A little tired. We're feeling rough. Now we're, like, easing into it. Yeah, everyone's I mean, had you some would coffees. never tell, so... Right? I'm chill. I'm, it's totally fine. Had some taquitos, went to bed. <laughs> Chilling. Fantastic. Well, I know this year has been really exciting for you. It's yeah. done a lot of touring and also really searching for zero. New record. New record. New record. When you reflect Pretty back. Pretty much, yeah, world tour. Yes. It's been sick. So when you reflect back on 2015, what would you say is the coolest moment that's happened? Uh, I don't know. There's been a lot of really cool moments, um, both, like, abroad and at home. Um, we played some, like, really killer shows. Like, when we kicked off the record, we... You know, flew to Japan and played a show and then flew back to Toronto and played at the Phoenix, which is like the biggest hometown show we've ever done, uh, headlining. So it was just like surreal in all of that. And then went and played in the States, toured over in UK, Europe, uh, did huge shows over there with While She Sleeps and just have been, you know, continuing this like crazy touring. So I don't know. I don't know if I can say like there's been one. One moment. Yeah, because there's been like tons of super fun, huge shows and tons of like... Like, playing Hard Luck last night was, like, amazing. It's, like, 300 of our, like, closest friends, like, all packed in a room, sweating on each other and partying and singing along. And it's, like, oh, this is great. You know what I mean? And then yeah. it's, like, yeah, come in here tonight, and there's going to be, like, a 1,000 of our closest friends, like, all packed in and sweating and singing That's along. So, so awesome. Yeah, the whole thing's been amazing. Well, being that is three Toronto shows in a row. Yeah. Like, that's pretty crazy. Do you guys feel Toronto like you, tour. Toronto tour. Do you guys feel like you really have to pump things up and make them extra special since it's a hometown show? Like, what are your thoughts on that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think also in general, just, like, for us and for, I think, like, Silverstein, who have been at it for, you know, like, 14, 15 years. We've been a band for 10 years. It's, like, one of those things where you're like, well, I want to keep making these shows, like, 
special and fun and important and trying to think of different ways to do that um for you know silverstein doing an amazing fest like this and having so many like of their friends come and play and like such a killer lineup like that's awesome for us we were like oh let's play like grimy small shows like we used to uh and just like have a blast and do two nights of that yeah. so it's like yeah it's fun to to think of like these different ways to kind of do stuff and how did you get involved with stay warm toronto uh basically through you know we've known silverstein since forever yeah um since those dudes were putting on shows at like the ymca is where i met like <laughs> paul and bill wow. uh and like all of our old bands have played like Jay, Mikey, Scott, myself, we're all in different bands that have played either shows that they've put on or shows with Silverstein like back in the day. So we've like literally known those guys for like 15 years. Uh, and then we're also on New Damage with them, yes. which is amazing. Uh, so Rich, who runs New Damage, the Silverstein guys, just was all perfect timing, made sense. And being that you played so many shows this year, I know you can't pick a favorite that you actually played, but I'm assuming you saw a bunch as well throughout the year between festivals and people opening. And yeah. So what was my favorite show this year? Yes. Um, I recently got to see Fuzz. I okay, don't know if cool. you know that band. Yeah, Ty Seagal. Yeah, yeah, I saw them when they played the Hoxton. Very cool. And that show, like, blew my mind. Like, so fun. They came out in corpse paint. But they didn't do any of the theatrics. Like, they came out in corpse paint to set up their gear. And just were, like, <laughs> tuning their drums with, like, corpse paint on. And yeah. then didn't leave the stage. They were just like, okay, we're ready to play. And then just, like, started playing. So all the theatrics with none of the formality. <laughs> like, so amazing. Uh, so, yeah, I would say that show okay, easily. Cool. My favorite show of the year. No, I had someone go to that, and they would not stop raving about it. Oh, uh, so. it was killer. The place was packed, and they sounded amazing. Yeah. It was great. Oh, that's awesome. Now, of course, both of us are from Toronto. Okay. Uh, but a lot of our viewers are actually global. The internet. The internet. So for people who aren't from Toronto, if they were to come hang with you for a day, where would you take them? What would you want to do? Hmm. I feel like my go-to is now Ossington Street. Okay. That strip has like so many rad shops and places where I take people and would show them. Whether you're into, you know, there's amazing clothing stores like a shop called Town Moto, which does like motorcycle gear and stuff like that. There's an amazing brewery called Bellwoods that uh, is right next door. There's a great coffee shop called Crafted. Up the street, there's like a barber shop called Town Barber, which is just like anything you're into. There's a shop called Lover's Land that's on that street that's all like women's fashion and like bridal stuff. It's Very just cool. like, yeah, Ossington, killing it. <laughs> the world, check it out. <laughs> and the van's known for creating a lot of chaos live. We try. I'm very excited to see that tonight at the Stay One yeah. Festival. Yeah. Very excited. I think it'll translate into yeah. chaos. I, I hope so. Yeah. You better deliver. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, just on the topic of chaos, I wanted to ask you guys, when you're on stage and you're looking at the fans going crazy, what's running through your mind? Do you get distracted at times or does it just like get you even more pumped? Uh, I'm usually just like totally in the moment pumped. I feel like the only thing that gets me distracted is something like funny. Okay. Like, definitely, like, Jay and I will, like, make jokes or, like, try and make jokes and we'll do stupid stuff that's funny to us. Maybe it's not funny to anyone else, <laughs> but that's the times when we, like, screw up. And, like, like I was, like, someone threw a pack of cigarettes on the stage when we were playing in PEI. And so I thought it would be really funny to, like, give everyone cigarettes. So I had, like, a smoke in my mouth. Not lit, but just, like, putting smokes in everyone's mouths. So I was, like reaching over Mikey's drums while he was playing to like put a smoke in his mouth because I thought it was just so funny that we were all playing with smokes in our mouths okay. and Jay was like putting in his headstock and like at that point I'm just like oh this is so funny and I'm just laughing and everyone's having a fun time and like going crazy but I'm sure the audience is like why are what's they going yeah on? what's going on or like <laughs> someone threw a shoe on the stage when we were playing in Australia and I thought it would be so funny to like sing into the shoe like a phone and I was just like, oh, shoe phone, such a good idea. But so many people were like, what are you what even are you doing, doing up there? Yeah, I was like, I'm entertaining <laughs> myself and Jay and our one friend who was side stage. They thought yeah. it was hilarious. So that was that, like, that matters, yeah. though. Those are the times when I get distracted, when I try and be like really funny to Jay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the record, I want to go back to it just for a second. It's a yeah. really cool album. Oh, thanks so uh, much. One song I'm really digging is Arsenic and the Earth Snake. Oh, sick. It's really cool. It's such a cool groove to it. Um, but the lyrics, they're almost like mystical in a way. Like oh. almost I'm getting this like sorcery vibe from yeah. it. What was that initially inspired by? Uh, so that song is basically about we had like a real stretch of people close to the band passing away 
Um, and so it was kind of my way to like, you know, deal with a lot of that and to kind of talk about how a lot of people had a rough go in the year 2013. There was a lot of our friends who just were just like, I don't know what it is, if this year's cursed or if there's something weird going on. But a lot of people had, you know, really rough kind of go. So when we were coming home from, um, basically the, I guess the wake of our, our friend's uh, funeral, we were coming back from it and Jay and I were talking about all these things and we were like, that year I was 33, which is also known as being like a cursed year. It was 2013. It was just like all these things. So we started talking about like, you know, what's kind of like the, you know, the significance of those, like, you know, the bad omens of like a 13, 33, uh, how that kind of ties into other things like alchemy, like certain, you know, like arsenic is the, um, has like a certain uh, numerological or num numerolit. Ah, I can't even think of what it is. But, but yeah, basically <laughs> all of these signs that kind of like pointed towards like arsenic, snakes, okay. like all of these kind of like voodoo, you know, like things that all maybe it, it's something that's you know you take seriously or not but there was definitely like a hex kind of hanging over 2013 for all of us so yeah. that was what that song was about okay thank you for sharing that no no worries yeah and then there's a line in the song which is whatever you believe in and you also have a song called sorceress so it's some like dark magic something you believe in or voodoo like yeah i you? definitely that is something that i definitely believe in i'm you know not you know one way or another i definitely like believe heavily in like positives and negatives and how that energy kind of you know is uh inferred in different cultures whether it's voodoo or you know black magic or you know hexes things like that i do think a, a lot about like you know yeah positive and negative energy and okay. like how that like actually works out in things and whether that's like in you know witchcraft or whether people believe it's satanism like things like that i do think that you can kind of see how it manifests itself across yeah. and even, across the board even if you're someone who doesn't believe in that stuff it's just so fascinating yeah it's and i also yeah i think it's kind of interesting and how it does come up in a lot of different cultures where you're like wow there's too many similarities across yeah. the board yeah no, i've totally noticed that Especially hearing a song like that, it really wants to like it makes you want to dive into all of that. Yeah, even more. and it's kind of cool. It's like conspiracy theory. Like when yeah. you start like really diving in and, and like looking it up, you're, you're like, you're oh, just there's, obsessed. yeah, there's all these other like avenues that these things work in. Yeah. And you guys are known also for working with a lot of people, whether having them in music videos, you being in music videos, and oh, guest yeah. vocals. Is there anyone that you'd love to partner up with who you've yet to? Um, I mean, we've definitely been like knocking off a lot of people out of the list. Uh, we just recently did a thing with Joel Plaskett. We went out to the East Coast and we recorded a cover of his song "Through and Through and Through." Oh, cool! Yeah, which I was see, has this been released? Or? It just got released. Okay. So just a couple of weeks ago, there's like a stream online that you can look up. Cool. But uh, working with Joel was amazing, and being out in his studio, we were just there for a day. Uh, and when we left, we were all just like, "Oh, what would it be like to like do more, you know, and like work on more stuff with Joel?" So. Even though we did do that one thing, I would love to kind of see what would happen if we did, you know, a few more songs or some of our songs there, yeah. especially for someone like him, who's such a, like a, I think he's like an amazing songwriter, but also like totally gets like tone and all that kind of nerdy stuff that my dudes are into too. So I was just like, oh, this is such a rad mix. Nice. I think it would be wicked to do, yeah, maybe a whole record with him or maybe an EP or something in the future would be amazing. Cool. I wanna, I'm definitely going to check out that new track. Yeah, it, it turned out really well. I'm really stoked on it. Cool. Um, something I want to bring up is you recently shared some fan tattoos. Oh, so it's yeah. It's obvious that your fans love you guys because enough to get it permanently. I mean, yeah, that's, we that's have a quite lot the of commitment. Yeah, gnarly tattoos <laughs> out there, which is awesome. Has there been one that's really connected with you as far as seeing that, thinking like someone really cared enough to get that done? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely now there's so many kids that have them, which I think is amazing. I do think of like when we first started seeing them, like for Birthing the Giant, like, you know, more like 10 years ago yeah. or nine years ago when someone decided to get a cancer bath tattoo and that being like, this is insane, you know, and people having like versions of the the like drawings that our friend Alex did. And it's just like, this is so crazy. But now we've gotten to the point where we actually make the artwork, like we made all the artwork for DSOL really simple so that everyone could get it tattooed. Oh, you and actually almost, did that in mind? Yeah, because oh, cool. we were like, a lot of people got tattoos of birthing and Bears, Mare, Scraps and Bones and uh, Hail Destroyer. And if you don't live in a, in a you know, big city with good tattoo artists, you can easily get a bad version of some of this really complicated art. Yeah. So we were like, well, why don't we make really simple art 
that everyone can get tattooed and then it's super easy. That's so, so cool. Yeah, so all the symbols for DSOL were just like with that in mind, like everyone can tattoo this. We'll make this really easy. And then the same thing with Searching for Zero. We have like symbols for all the songs. And then we're like, these are all easily tattooable <laughs> depending on your access to talented artists or whether you want to just do like stick and pokes yourself. Yeah. Like at home, like here's basically the template. It's, you, you know, it's not hard. You won't screw it up. There you go. That's crazy. I've never heard of a band actually making their artwork so people could go. Yeah, we were like, we. There's a lot of people who get these tattoos. We should make these these images like really easily tattooable. It's very cool. I know for yourself too. You have quite a few tattoos. Yeah, I have a lot of cancer bath tattoos too. So that was yeah, that was also part of it. So I was just like, oh, I'm really into stick and poke tattoos. Like, (laughs) I'll just. You do you know. do them yourself, or do you get other people to do them? Uh, some I've done myself. Some oh, I cool. like get other people to do. I haven't ventured into that. I'm just afraid it's gonna turn out awful. <laughs> oh, it's the punkest thing you can do. You just like get ink and like some sort of sharp object, like yes. a needle or a guitar string, and you just poke ink into yourself. <laughs> Done. I, I want to end things uh, just on the topic of fans, since okay. we're just discussing them. So for all your fans, who'll be viewing? Anything you want to say to them all? Uh, you guys are the best. They're literally the whole reason, other than our love of music, you're the whole reason why we're here. So let's keep partying forever. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. No, this is rad. Thanks yeah, for really letting me come and hang out you. on this couch with you. Yes, of course. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. Ambi. <laughs> Ambi. A music blog, yeah? Ambi. <laughs> Ambi, you twat.